Positioning a patient for an A-lift, uh, the patient is placed supine on a radiolucent flat top table that we can fluoro through with arms out to the sides. And the patient is then placed into Trendelenburg to allow the abdominal contents to slide cranial. And the abdomen is then prepped and draped in usual fashion. Prior to the prep, we localize uh, the uh, disc that we will be replacing uh, with a cage or disc arthroplasty on AP and lateral fluoro. We mark midline and then a lateral line uh, at the fan and steel location that is in line with the disc to be operated on, in this case, L5-S1. A transverse midline fan and steel skin incision is made in line with the approach and exposure to the L5-S1 disc. We move through subcutaneous tissue with electrocautery and continue down to the level of the anterior rectus sheath. The anterior rectus sheath is visualized and we further elevate uh, the subcutaneous tissue on the left side as well as midline where it's adherent. After making a small hole in the anterior rectus sheath directly in the middle of the left rectus muscle, we incise longitudinally the rectus sheath both cranially and caudally. The anterior rectus sheath muscle is visualized and we then tunnel back to midline to retract the left rectus muscle to the left. The retroperitoneal space is seen beneath the left rectus muscle. Next, we tunnel in the retroperitoneal space laterally to identify and palpate the left iliacus and then psoas muscle. Just medial of the psoas are the iliac vein and artery. Next, we place retractors to visualize the sacral promontory and L5-S1 disc, as well as the left iliac vessels, which are then protected behind retractors. The anterior annulus of L5-S1 is seen here. The descending sacral vessels are cauterized, as well as other small bleeders, which are then incised prior to retraction in order that they're not torn off the common iliac vein or artery. We place a long bovi tip in the center of the L5-S1 disc and take an AP fluoro spot to confirm midline. Next, we incise the anterior annulus of L5-S1 and perform a box annulotomy to make space for the cage that we will be placing. Prior to disc removal, we use an end plate dissector to free up the disc and cartilage end plate from the bony end plate above and below. We then use a disc grasper to remove the entire disc. Small remaining fragments are removed with straight and angled curettes and a pituitary rongeur. After measuring against a trial, we increase the size of our anterior annulotomy. A trial spacer is placed to identify size and fit.
with the end plates fully prepared, we pack a cage, in this case with BMP and allograft bone, and then place the cage down into the disc space, countersinking at one to two millimeters. Fixation screws are placed. We use an angled awl and screwdriver to place the screws. After final AP and lateral fluoro views, we sequentially remove our retractor blades and examine the vessels to be sure there's no ongoing bleeding. We close the uh, anterior rectus sheath with a running locking ovicral stitch. We try to close the anterior rectus sheath at edge to edge rather than in folding. The sub-Q is closed with two ovicral buried stitches, and the skin is closed with a full ovicral subcuticular stitch followed by dermabond. We use an abdominal binder post-op and mobilize the patient the same afternoon.